there, I am Anne LaFollette and welcome to this week's broadcast. I want to talk to you today about embracing the creative process. And what I mean by that is I have been participating, in fact, I've been leading a 100 day challenge. We are on day 78 of 100, which is an amazing feeling. But what I have discovered is that the thing that has been most important in my success in staying with this 100 day challenge is actually the way I have been able to embrace the process itself as opposed to the actual creative work that I'm producing. So I thought I would just share with you my top five kind of tips or insights into why embracing the process has worked for me and how it might actually work for you. So reason number one or tip number one or insight number one is that you want to create a ritual and your ritual can look however you want it to look. You might ask yourself some questions around, for example, are you more of a morning person or are you more creative in the middle of the day or actually are you more of an evening person? You might want to build your ritual kind of around that. Do you need a clean space, a clean workspace? So you've got to get rid of all the clutter or are you actually okay plopping yourself down pretty much anywhere before you get started on a creative project? What other kind of ambiance do you need around you? Would lighting a candle help? Uh, would you like to have some music in the background? What are some other components that actually, if you make them into a ritual, will, will incentivize you to sit down every day and pursue your creative practice? So that's kind of insight number one, is to figure out like what is your daily ritual gonna look like? So my insight number two is, ease into it at the beginning. So getting started is always the hardest thing to do. And so think about whether or not just turning the page in your notebook so that you know that you're gonna be looking at a clean new page or getting all of your supplies organized the night before so you don't even have to think about that when you uh, get started the next morning. Or do you in fact want to simplify what the supplies are that you might be, that you might use so uh, I often find that if I sit down and all of my supplies are out in front of me, that can be a little bit overwhelming because that voice in my head says, oh my gosh, there's so many choices, where do I start? So it might be actually easier to set some limits and say, you know what, for the next 10 days, I'm just gonna work with a pen, my paper, and then I'm gonna go pick a flower out of the garden or I'm gonna go for a walk and pick a flower in, my, in, a, in a garden near me, and that's what I'm gonna focus on. So just think about like ways that you can ease into the process so that those beginning, uh, the process of beginning to make those marks on your paper is easier for you. Then my third insight would be that time is really fluid and you wanna be aware of the fact that sometimes time is gonna move really, really slowly. You're gonna feel like every single minute is passing in your mind and that you're aware of every single minute. And then other times, time is just gonna completely disappear. And you wanna lean into those days when the time is really disappearing because that's magical. And stay with it as long as possible. But on those days where the time is going incredibly slowly, do not worry about it. In fact, just make lines on your sheet of paper or just make you know squares or shapes or blobs, anything to kind of just get your hand moving. And those blobs or shapes might turn into an interesting geometric pattern in the future. They might turn into a cool texture or they may turn into nothing at all. The most important thing is to just stay with it. Don't get up, don't quit, just stay with it. And, um, and that is the most important thing. My, la my next insight is really around your why. So whenever you, get, whenever you get started on something like a 100 day challenge or on really wanting to, to become more aware of your creative practice or you wanna get better at creating a daily practice, Having a why and understanding your why and articulating your why is very important because you can go back to that kind of like a touchstone. You can, on the days when you're feeling um, unmotivated or when you're physically sick, you can think about your why and it may actually help you still do your creative practice on that particular day. The other thing that's great about a why is you can support your why 
by setting mini goals for yourself. So in a 100 day challenge, for example, I set a ton of little mini goals for myself. It's the first week, then it's the first 10 days, then it's the second week, then it's anything that has a five or a zero at the end of it. And I tie those mini goals back to my why, and I might also do really fun things like setting a reward for myself. I might put away a dollar during the first week, and then I'll go, go down to Pete's and get myself a really nice coffee. So playing around with any of those things that A, support your why and keep your why kind of alive and accessible to you can help a lot in the overall process. And then finally, the most important insight is to give yourself grace. When you are trying to do something for 100 days, it's hard and you may not be able to do it every single day. And the most important thing is if you skip a day or you skip two days or you skip a week or you have to go travel and you're going to miss two weeks, do not beat yourself up. The most important thing is that when you're back in a place where you can get back into the routine, restart. One of the great things about, about in fact, having a lapse during one of these challenges or during your daily practice is you can re-examine that ritual and decide, well, what is still serving me? What's working me that's a part of that ritual and what is no longer serving me or how might I want to change it up to bring some newness into the equation? And so take advantage of the fact that you took a lapse or that you took a break and in, and bring some newness into the process that will help you start again with a fresh mindset and with new energy and with new creativity. So those are my five insights in terms of how I really think the process itself can help you to maintain your daily practice or if you are in a 100 day challenge or might be thinking about doing one next year, that embracing the process can really help you be successful. If you are looking for some creative inspiration over the summer, I highly re recommend that you check out Skillshare. There's a link below this video that will give you two months free over the summer, which is an amazing opportunity for you to dive into Skillshare, search for classes on topics that you wanna learn. There are teachers like me on the platform that teach surface design, that teach animation, that teach how to do social, social media time-lapse videos. That was my first class on the platform. And there are also classes on marketing and more business-oriented topics. But if you're looking for some creative inspiration over the summer, check out Skillshare and use the, the link in the description below this video so that you can get two months completely free to explore to your heart's content and learn something new. I always like to say in closing that I am Ann LaFollette and it's never too late to create. I will see you next week and bye for now. Mm -hmm.